Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we'll discuss about pivot shift test, which is a test to identify anterior cruciate ligament rupture. To understand pivot shift test in a better way, we should be familiar with the anatomy and function of anterior cruciate ligament in the sagittal view and the axial view of the knee joint. First, we'll discuss about its role in sagittal view of the knee joint. As seen in this radiograph, the black structure is the anterior cruciate ligament, which extends from the anterior part of the intercondylar eminence of the tibia to the posterior part of the lateral femoral condyle. So coming to the pictorial representation of the sagittal view of the knee joint, the pink structure is the distal femur with the femoral condyle. The blue structure is the upper end of the tibia with the tibial condyle. The black structure is the anterior cruciate ligament extending from the anterior aspect of the tibial condyle to the posterior aspect of the lateral femoral condyle. When the ACL is intact as shown in the given picture and an anteriorly directed force is given to the tibia, the intact ACL prevents the anterior subluxation of the tibia. In a similar sagittal view of the knee joint, but with a ruptured anterior cruciate ligament as shown in the picture, an anteriorly directed force to the tibia will result in anterior subluxation of the tibia because of the loss of restraint of anterior cruciate ligament that is ruptured. Thus, anterior subluxation of the tibial plateau is an important element of ACL rupture in the sagittal view of knee joint and this should be kept in mind to understand the mechanism of pivot shift test. Now coming to the axial view of the knee joint, this black structure is again the anterior cruciate ligament and the structure which is shown is the upper end of the tibia with the medial and lateral tibial condyles. The anterior cruciate ligament as shown extends from the anterior aspect of the tibial intercondylar eminence and attaches to the posterior aspect of the lateral femoral condyle. Now coming to the pictorial representation of the axial view of the knee joint, the pink structure is the distal end of the femoral condyle and the blue structure is the upper plateau of the tibial condyle and the medial and lateral aspects of the knee joint are mentioned as given in the picture. In a normal knee joint with an intact anterior cruciate ligament, the distal femoral condyle directly sits above the tibial condyle without any anterior translation of the tibia. However, in a knee joint with a ruptured anterior cruciate ligament, when a medially directed force is given to the leg in the form of internal rotation of the leg, there is an anterior and a lateral subluxation of the tibial plateau from the distal femoral condyle as depicted in the video. Hence, anterolateral subluxation of tibial plateau is the second important element that occurs following anterior cruciate ligament rupture which has to be kept in mind to understand the mechanism of pivot shift test. So, the first element is the anterior subluxation of the tibial plateau in the sagittal view and the second element is the anterolateral subluxation of tibial plateau in the axial view. These two mechanisms should be kept in mind to understand the mechanism of pivot shift test. Thus, the principle of pivot shift test is 
to achieve reduction of anterior and lateral subluxation of tibial plateau that occurs following anterior cruciate ligament rupture so that it is repositioned again into the knee joint. The important anatomical structure that reduces this tibial subluxation is the iliotibial band. As seen in this anteroposterior view of the anatomical picture of the thigh, the iliotibial band which is red in color extends from its origin in the iliac crest runs along the lateral aspect of the thigh to get inserted into the upper part of the lateral aspect of the tibial condyle. This pictorial representation of the anteroposterior view shows the thigh in the upper part and leg in the lower part. The black structure is the anterior cruciate ligament and the green structure is the medial collateral ligament. The red curved line indicates the iliotibial tract which gets attached to the upper and outer aspect of the lateral tibial condyle. This anatomical attachment of the iliotibial tract is important because during contraction of the iliotibial tract, it pulls the lateral aspect of the tibial plateau posteriorly. Similarly, the lateral view of the thigh demonstrates the entire course of iliotibial tract and we see that the iliotibial tract gets attached to the lateral aspect of the upper part of the tibial condyle below the knee joint. The pictorial representation of the lateral aspect of the thigh with the thigh in the upper part and leg in the lower part seen from the lateral view and the black structure is the anterior cruciate ligament. The red line indicates the iliotibial tract which attaches to the lateral aspect of the upper part of the tibia and from this illustration it is clear that the iliotibial tract during contraction acts as flexor of the knee joint. Now with the above described basic knowledge we come to the actual technique of pivot shift test. The starting position of the knee joint to demonstrate pivot shift test should be in such a way that it reproduces the anterior and the lateral subluxation of the tibial plateau which happens following an ACL rupture. The knee is held in full extension before starting of the test to recreate the first element of anterior subluxation of the tibial plateau that occurs following an ACL tear. After the knee is held in full extension which causes anterior tibial subluxation, the next step is to recreate the lateral subluxation of the tibial plateau in addition to the anterior subluxation which can be done by internal rotation of the leg causing anterolateral subluxation of the tibial plateau as shown in the picture. The next step is to relax the anatomical structure which causes reduction of the anterior and lateral subluxation of the tibial plateau which is nothing but relaxation of the iliotibial band. The relaxation of the iliotibial band can be done by holding the hip in abduction and giving a valgus stress to the knee joint both of which will keep the iliotibial band loose so that anterolateral subluxation of the tibial plateau can be recreated. This clinical picture demonstrates the position of the limb of the patient and the position of the hands of the examiner before starting the pivot shift test. The limb of the patient should be in complete extension of the knee joint to cause anterior subluxation of the tibial plateau and the examiner's right hand should hold the lower part of the leg 
so that it can be rotated internally to cause lateral subluxation of the tibial plateau the examiner's left hand is placed on the lateral aspect of the knee joint to give a valgus stress to relax the iliotibial band with the leg held in internal rotation and valgus stress as described above the knee joint is then gradually flexed this pictorial representation of the sagittal view of the knee joint will make you understand what happens during gradual flexion of the knee joint the blue cylindrical part above is the lateral aspect of the thigh the blue conical part below is the lateral aspect of the leg the red structure is the iliotibial band and the black structure is the torn anterior cruciate ligament and it is clearly seen that the tibia is anteriorly subluxed in the sagittal view as the knee is gradually flexed the iliotibial band which acts as the flexor of the knee joint pulls the anteriorly subluxed tibial plateau into the knee joint thus achieving reduction of the knee joint at 20 to 30 degree of flexion with the thud which is called thud of relocation of the subluxed knee joint this thud can be felt and heard during relocation of the knee joint the same mechanism when seen from the axial view shows anterolateral subluxation of the tibial plateau to begin with and the iliotibial band getting attached to the lateral aspect of the tibial condyle as the knee is gradually flexed at 20 to 30 degree of flexion the iliotibial band pulls back the lateral aspect of the tibial condyle back into the knee joint with a thud of relocation of the subluxed knee joint thus to conclude pivot shift test is used to assess anterior cruciate ligament tear the principle of pivot shift test is to achieve reduction of the anterior and lateral subluxation of tibial plateau that occurs following an anterior cruciate ligament rupture intact medial collateral ligament and iliotibial band are needed because these are the structures which will reduce the anterior and lateral subluxed tibial plateau and hence these structures has to be intact feel for the thud of reduction of subblux knee on flexion of 20 to 30 degree which is pathognomonic of pivot shift test thank you all and will meet you soon with my next video